Hello again and welcome back to the Fat Fish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and this is a video about picking technique. Very much about how you play rather than what you play. It kind of falls under the heading of uh, picking dynamics. And what this is about is about thinking about the way that your picking hand interacts with the guitar. About using a different amount of force just to give you like an extra dimension to your, to your lead lines. Because if you think about when I'm talking, you know, when you when we're using speech, we've got various things that we can do to to just stop that speech from just being dull and monotone. We can raise the pitch. You know, if you want to ask somebody a question, you can you can you raise the pitch of your voice, or you can lower your pitch of your voice if you want to get some other inflection over. You can change the the rate at which you're talking if you want to you know, emphasise specific points, or you can speak more quietly or speak more loudly if there's a point that you particularly want to stress you might want to raise your voice that sort of thing and it's the same thing with with your your picking hand you know you can change the uh, the speed that you're playing at you can change the the pitch of the notes with, you know with your fretting hand but what your picking hand can also let you do is play more softly or play harder to give different amounts of like if you like inflection and just make your lead lines a little bit more interesting so you know instead of just always playing notes with exactly the same amount of intensity with the picking hand you know if we wanted to play something really really soft alternatively you could really dig in you know it's got a different kind of characteristic if i'm playing it softer if i'm playing it loud so when you, you know, when you're playing lead lines, think about how your your picking hands interacting with the the strings, and think about you know easing up sometimes, you know, just to to take your foot off the gas a little bit, and other times you might really want to dig in and really emphasise certain notes. And it's also worth talking about so like the the pick that you're using. So I'm assuming here that you're using a like a plectrum or a pick, depending on what you want to call it. Now, if you watched the the channel. Uh, Probably over the last six months or so, you might have seen I posted a few more videos about picks. Um, I've had an interest in like different types of picks for, for a few years, but in the last six months or so, I've really started to uh, experiment a lot more with different materials and different uh, shapes and sizes and whatnot, finding what works best for me because sometimes the, the smallest difference between two picks, you know, difference in thickness or, or size or something, can have a, a a surprisingly big impact on how that pick feels to play and how how it impacts on your on your your playing technique. And I found myself gravitating very much towards thicker picks. So this is a an acrylic pick. It's about 3.1 3.2 millimeters thick. So it's it's a it's a, probably a lot thicker than you might be used to playing if you're just playing like you know the the 50p or the you know the 50 cent picks that you get off of you know from the the counter at your local music store. But I found that a thicker pick, one that doesn't have any real give to it, actually gives a lot more control. And if you want to get into like more, like I say, picking dynamics and making your lead lines more interesting, think about the pick that you're using. Because yeah, if I want to dig in with this, I can dig into the strings and every amount, every bit of energy that I'm putting in with my picking hand is being transferred through the pick into the strings. I think about if I was playing something a little bit thinner, you know, it's like a light celluloid pick. It might be okay for like gentle picking, but as I dig in harder, if that pick's going to bend, it's a bit like playing with a compressor pedal. It's got a, like a natural amount of energy that it'll allow it to transfer. And then some of the energy from a picking hand, rather than being transferred from the pick into the strings, all it's doing is just bending the pick. Yeah, so the, the pick the pick's not transferring all of the energy to the strings, whereas something like this, a thicker pick, you've got a lot more control. And you can you can pick really, really lightly. Or you can pick really, really hard. And it's it's just it's got a much more sort of consistent uh consistent feel rather than the pick has starting to bend a little bit. So I would strongly encourage you to Think about the sort of pick that you're using. If you want a you know, you know, good dynamic picking, something a little bit thicker. And also in terms of you know bringing out picking dynamics, thinking about the like your signal chain. So here I'm playing my custom shop Strat from Fender, 
and I've got two uh, drive pedals on the go. Uh, I'm playing at the clean channel on the amp and I've got a bit of Boss Blues Driver and a bit of Frederick Effects Golden Eagle, which is like a clone cologne. Both of those pedals are set reasonably light in terms of the, the drive settings. So this is the clean channel on its own. This is the blues driver. This is the golden eagle. And then the two together. Yeah, so there's there's a little bit of drive stacked onto a little bit of drive, but the guitar can still breathe. You can kind of you can hear its voice. Now, if I went and put loads of gain on my sound, get something a bit more saturated, um, it's something like this. There it's becoming a bit more saturated and you're losing some of the guitar's natural voice and so it's harder to get it's like dynamics when you've got a whole lot of gain. So I, another thing I'd encourage you to do is think about just dial the gain back a little bit and counterintuitive though it, it sounds, having two gain pedals, you know, two drive pedals like I was using there with the Blues Driver and the Golden Eagle, rather than just one gain pedal, one distortion pedal or something set really, really high. The two light gain stages stacked is often a lot more effective. And like I said, it allows the, the guitar's natural voice to come through a little bit more. And any like dynamics from your picking also come through a little bit more. And lastly, on the subject of pedals, if you play with a compressor, you need to be a bit careful with picking dynamics because compressors by their, you know, by their nature, they're about stopping you from playing too loud. If, you, if you're really digging in and hitting those strings really, really hard, what a compressor might do is actually start to bring the, the overall volume down so you lose some of the dynamic range. So if you've got a, a, a compressor, be careful about how you set it. You may choose not even to use it at all uh, or use it on a much lighter setting if you want to play something where you, you're using lots of dynamics. Otherwise, the compressor, where the way it limits the volume, it's just not going to, you know, you, you, those, those dynamics that you're putting in are going to get taken out by the compressor pedal. What I've got down on the board, I haven't actually got a switch on at the minute, but I use a, a pedal that's got a dry through. So you've got the, the compressed signal, which might be doing some limitation on the volume, but it still allows some of the unaffected signal to go through so that you get the full dynamic range. So just some to, to bear in mind, if you're, you're practicing with different intensities of picking and you're not hearing the effect, if you've got a compressor or a limiter or something like that in the signal chain, that's probably why you're not hearing it. The, the pedals taking some of that uh, some of that away. So gain pedals in in moderation are good, but compressors might be a little bit more a little bit more problematic. So this is all about just adding some like another dimension to your playing and making your lead lines a little bit more interesting. Now I talked be, before about uh, a part of the what makes a good lead line is you get a, a, a good balance between tension and release you know rather than just you know just playing something monotonous you might have some some that's got a little bit more dissonance to it and then you resolve to a, a really consonant note or something like that another way that you can introduce tension and releases you know by playing something really really soft and then kind of digging in with something a little bit louder at the end just kind of just trading off the different um, the different feels um, say so it, it just gives your gives your lead lines a bit more a bit more character okay so something for you to go away and uh, practice there I hope you found that useful if you did please click like down there if you really enjoy the video and you want to see other things that are posted on the channel then please click subscribe which is also down there you're welcome to leave a comment but I don't always see comments that are left on video so if there's something specific that you want to ask me whether it's about guitars uh, guitar playing, music theory, anything at all, you're probably better off going here, filling that form in, sending your question in that way. I'm guaranteed to see it and I can get around to answering your question in a future video. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.